So in this example, we're going to work with the continuous time signal x of t, that is this triangle signal right here. And we are actually going to compute the convolution of x of t with itself. So we're going to compute y of t, where y of t is the convolution of x of t with x of t. And x of t is this triangle um, signal right here. So its total width is width of 2. On the negative time, it is a positive line, so that's why it's 1 plus t. It has a slope that's positive 1. And on the positive time, it has a negative slope line, so that equation is 1 minus t. And we'll need those equations here as we do the convolution integral. So when we say compute y of t equals x of t convolved with x of t, what we really mean is compute this convolution integral. So I've written the definition of the convolution integral out. And the trick to doing any convolution integral problem like this is being able to sketch x of tau and x of t minus tau. So the first things we typically do when working these problems are go ahead and sketch these basic signals. So sketching x of tau is pretty easy because x of tau looks exactly like x of t. The only difference is we're using a different variable for the signal. So it looks identical to x of t with all the t's replaced by tau's. To sketch x of t minus tau, I usually do that in a few steps. The first thing I do is sketch x of minus tau. So I sketch the time-reversed version of this signal that we just sketched. So if that is x of tau, x of minus tau is just this signal flipped on the tau axis. So because of the signal we're dealing with here is an even function, it looks exactly like the original signal. So x of tau looks just like x of minus tau because it is an even function. Now that I've sketched x of minus tau though, I can go ahead and sketch x of t minus tau. When I sketch x of t minus tau, I end up with the shape of x of minus tau, but it's been shifted to time t. So what I like to do is keep track of where the time origin is right here. That was originally the time origin tau equals zero, but when I shift by an amount t, the peak of this triangle is going to end up at t. So that's what that looks like. So this right here is the signal x of t minus tau. It's now located at time t. And now I need to think through what the equations are for these different lines. Well, this line right here is still a positive sloped line with respect to tau. Its y-intercept, though, has just changed. So it's changed by an amount minus t. So, for example, if t was equal to a negative 3, this triangle would be kind of on the left side of the origin. So this line would intersect at a positive value on the kind of y-axis, so to speak. So the larger uh, we move it to the left, the more we make this negative, the larger the y-intercept will be. So that's why it's minus t. And same thing here for this equation. This is always a negatively sloped line, so it's always going to be something like 1 minus tau because it has a negative slope. But where it intersects is a function of t, and in, in this case it's in terms of plus t. So we now have the equations for these lines, and again, we need these equations when we actually do the convolution integral here in the next steps. So now we know what the pieces of the convolution integral look like, and that's always the most important thing to get right when you work this type of problem. I went ahead and labeled here on the tau axis as well where the triangle starts and stop. It's always located at t, and since our original triangle went plus 1 to the right and minus 1 to the left, this point has to be t minus 1, and this point has to be t plus 1 in terms of the variable t. So we've got all those sketched. Now we can go ahead and break things down into cases. Really what we're doing here in this convolution integral is taking the product of these two signals, this signal here and this signal here for different values of t. So I like to sketch little cartoons to break it down into cases so I can actually work the math for the convolution integral. So the first case that's easy to do is when this front edge of my time shifted and reverse triangle has not gotten to x of tau. So this is when t plus 1 is less than negative 1. In this case, these two triangles, when I multiply them together, they don't overlap. So because there's no overlap, when I actually go to do the product, I get 0, so which means integrate 0, which means y of t is 0, anytime t plus 1 is less than a negative 1. So if I rearrange that a little bit, add a negative 1 to both sides of that inequality, we get t is less than negative 2. 
So this convolution integral that I'm trying to solve, I now know a partial solution for it. I know that it's equal to zero any time t is less than a negative two because of this picture that I just sketched that let me evaluate the convolution integral for those times. Okay, let's keep going. Case two is a little bit more interesting. If I draw the cartoon for this, case two looks like this. Now the time shifted and reversed triangle is kind of creeped into our x of tau triangle, so there is going to be some overlap. Remember the equation for this line we had written down on the previous chart, it was one plus tau, and the equation for this line was one minus tau plus t, so we'll need that as we do our convolution integral. Here I do get some overlap. The overlap on the tau axis in the red section that I just highlighted right there. So there is some overlap, so when I do the product, I won't get zero everywhere like I did in case one. Let's go ahead and write down what times this case is good for. This is good any time the front edge of my time shifted and reversed triangle has crept past negative one. So t plus one is greater than or equal to negative one. If I rearrange that, I get t greater than or equal to negative two but I don't want it to go so far that we've transitioned into an another equation. So I also require that this front edge hasn't gone past time zero. So I need this front edge t plus one to be less than zero. Adding minus one to both sides of the inequality says t has to be less than a negative one. So the math we're about to do here is only good for times less than negative one and greater than or equal to a negative two. So let's go ahead and write down our convolution integral. And then we can go ahead and plug in the specifics. My limit is only non-zero over the time interval tau equals negative one to t plus one. So that's why my limit's changed. X of tau on that time interval is equal to one plus tau. And X of t minus tau, we wrote down the equation right here, is equal to one minus tau plus t. So I do that. So here's the integral I need to solve. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take a little shortcut. I'm not actually gonna multiply this out and do the calculus. It's very simple, it's just integrating a polynomial. I actually use Wolfram, Wolfram um, you know, integrator on the web to do these types of integrals. You should probably check that out, it's pretty easy. If you plug this into Wolfram, you get a nice expression that looks like this. One sixth times the quantity t plus two cubed. So that was case two, let's keep moving for case three. We're slowly sliding our time shifted and reversed triangle for different values of t. So here's the next case, three. So I've slid even more into x of tau. This time, um, set of times will be when tau plus one is greater than the origin, zero. So if I rearrange that, I get t greater than or equal to negative one. But I don't want t plus one to go past that front edge right here. So I still need t plus one to be less than one or t less than zero. So those are the time regions. So I'm gonna have a lot of overlap here, but we have to be careful, we have to break it up. There's actually three distinct regions that overlap in terms of these piecewise equations that we're going to use. There's this red region, there's this purple region, and this yellow region. So all of these are regions where they overlap, but there are slightly different equations for x of tau and x of t minus tau that we have to use there. So remember what that equation is, that's one plus tau minus t. We haven't written that down on this chart yet, so I wrote it down. And this, if you recall, was the line one minus tau. It had a negative slope. So let's go ahead and write that down so it's on the chart. And now let's go ahead and plug into our convolution integral. So I have a convolution integral to write down, and there's really three distinct regions that I need to break my integral into because the line slopes change from red to purple to yellow. So the red integral is an integral from minus one to t. And on that interval, x of tau is equal to one plus tau and x of t minus tau is equal to one plus tau minus t. So I need to work with this integral. Plus, the next region is the purple region. It's an integral from t to zero. On that region, x of tau is equal to one plus tau still, but now x of t minus tau is one minus tau plus t. So here's an integral I need to work. Plus, finally, the yellow region integral, which is an integral from zero to t plus one. On that part of the tau axis, my x of tau is equal to one minus tau now. Right? It's equal to the negative slope. And my x of t minus tau is also equal to a negative sloped line. So we use the one minus tau plus t equation. So really now I have three equations I need to work out. Again, I'm gonna take some shortcuts. I'm gonna use Wolfram integrator online. Just plug those in to get the answer for each one of these integrals. And these are the answers that I get. Notice the first 
and the third terms are the same. So I can go ahead and combine those. 1 6 plus 1 6 is equal to a third, so I'll go ahead and combine those. So that's the answer we get for case 3. So this answer right here is what y of t is equal to any time t is greater than negative 1 or less than 0. A couple more cases. Case 4, we'll go a little faster now. Here's the cartoon I get for case 4. So this corresponds to when t minus 1, this back edge, has gone past negative 1, which means t is greater than 0. But t minus 1 hasn't gotten to the origin yet, meaning t is less than 1. I have overlap here again, and three types of overlap where I have to handle piecewise equations, red, purple, and yellow. So I go ahead and write this down, t minus 1 to 0 of a positive slope and a positive slope. So those are both positive sloped equations, x of tau times x of t minus tau. Plus my next integral is from 0 to t. From 0 to t, I have 1 minus tau, because that's what x of tau is equal to. And I still have my positive sloped x of t minus tau, so that's why I have the positive sloped equation here with respect to dt, or d tau, I'm sorry. And then the yellow integral, which is t, um, the integral from tau equals t to 1. And both of those are negative sloped lines, so those are the equations 1 minus tau and 1 minus tau plus t. So again, three integrals to work. I'm going to use software to do that for me, save some very basic calculus work. Same type of thing happens here. This first and third term are the same, so they combine into one-third of that quantity. That was case 4. And now into case 5, we've almost slid completely past the x of tau triangle, so there's not a lot of overlap here. This is just the case when t minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, which means t is greater than or equal to 1. But I haven't slid completely past it yet, meaning t minus 1 is less than 1, or t is less than 2. So I only have a little bit of overlap here, this red region, which I can write the integral for easily. It's the integral over tau from t minus 1 to 1. I have the negative sloped x of tau, and I have the positive sloped x of t minus tau. So I plug those in, do a little integration with my software, and I get this for case 5. And then finally, just to wrap things up thoroughly, case 6 is the trivial case again. We've completely slid past. This edge has gone past 1, so that means t minus 1 is greater than or equal to 1, or t is greater than or equal to 2. There's no overlap in this case, so we get 0. So we have a lot of answers here. Let's go ahead and piece them together. This was the answer I got for t between minus 2 and minus 1. This was the answer that we got when t was between minus 1 and 0. This was the answer that we had for values of t between 0 and 1. And then this was the answer that we had for values of t between 1 and 2, and 0 everywhere else. So we've just kind of worked a convolution integral example where we were convolving two triangles and we worked through every case in a very methodical way to end up with this piecewise defined equation for y of t. You could have exploited some symmetry in this problem since we were dealing with even functions. You'll notice there's a lot of symmetry between these and these and you could have exploited that to maybe do half of the tedious computations and then just use the fact that we had to end up with an even function itself. But we had went ahead and worked this out the long way for this particular example.